uh, I think I might have already told you about the insurance company that they formed down there, and those fellows did and started. So they had just, so I uh, I went and got my airplane and flew down, and um, they, uh, I landed at a, a banana plantation, and it was a long clay strip, and it was raining. And they put 300 kilos in there, and then they put the ugliest man you've ever seen, name Ronaldo, and he got in the back seat of that airplane with a Mac-10 pistol. <laughs> he gonna make sure I went to Louisiana. <laughs> well, I took off. That fool didn't know I could have went to Argentina. He didn't know which way was north and south. There was no doubt in my mind. But anyway, we took off, and uh, the little wheels on that airplane kicked up the mud, and the wheel wells are large, and it filled completely up with mud. I mean, I was weighted down with a load of mud and the wheels wouldn't come up. So here I'm dragging along 100 miles an hour slower than I'm supposed to go. We are not going to make Louisiana. <laughs> so we got it for about 1,000 miles with the wheels hanging down. And I, says, I told him, I said, we've got to land. I got a strip in Belize that I can stop and clean this out and get some fuel. And boy, he put that Mac-10 pistol to my head, no, no, I'll kill you. You go into Louisiana, go into Louisiana. I said, well, go ahead and shoot, fool. You're going to die too right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we landed, and he was all upset. And there was a, a farm that had a nice long runway at Carter Ranch up in the uh, Orange Walk. And old Mr. Carter there, he was a friend of mine, and he sent the boy out to wash the plane, and we went in with this guy, Ronaldo, and I remember we had a nice big meal. And... Uh, they cleaned the plane, filled it up with fuel. We took up on off and went to uh, went on in New Orleans and, and uh, went on into Louisiana and landed. I landed on Interstate 10. That was the best landing strip ever, ever made. They were making that thing all the way across country, and it took them 10 years going across Louisiana and Texas. And at the Mississippi River, there was a cantilever bridge, and about five miles from it, they had a detour. Big red flashing lights, just like at the end of a runway. <laughs> I'd come over those and land on that run, on that on that runway. It was five miles long. Holy cow! And how the guy there with a, a truck to unload me? How fast would it take to unload? Five minutes, something. That's like that. it. Oh yeah. So from wheels down to wheels back up. Well, no, how much time? I would, I, I would come in like a hawk. I mean, just silent and touch down, and then the truck would come out of the bushes and we'd throw it in. And uh, the truck would leave, and I'd give him plenty of time before I took off because I'm going to make a lot of racket when I leave. And then I would go over and uh, across the Lake Pontchartrain land, and then I'd get in a car and go back over there and scrub the tire marks out where that I had landed. Because really? I wanted to do it over and over again. I didn't want the yeah. police sitting there waiting on me. So, so you would be wheels down for a little bit? Yes, maybe 15 minutes till he got out of there. 15 minutes till he got out, then... Then I'd take off, and as soon as he got back on the freeway, I, I knew he'd be, be back on the freeway five, ten minutes. Okay. So as soon as he got back in the traffic, I'd be all right, and I'd take off and make a lot of racket. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that all the way across Texas. I just landed that Interstate 10 as they built it. I had a big old truck when I was doing marijuana, <clears throat> and it was because uh, Antiques Unlimited down the side, and halfway down the truck, was it was packed with nice antiques. He opened that back door, slid it up. The chairs and stuff would just try to fall out on you. We had bungee cords on them to hold them in. <laughs> and then we had a, a a wall built across there. I did it, and uh, and it was smell proof. It was sealed right up to the top. And then underneath by the driveway, I had cut four boards out and made a, a plate on the floor. And then I had a, a, a rack over the top of it so the marijuana couldn't fall on it. And we'd get under there by that driveway and shove that stuff up in the truck. I could put three tons in the front front part of that truck. Holy and haul cow. it all over the country. It didn't matter. If you, we never even got stopped. But if you did get stopped, they, they're not going to take all that, unload all that furniture, not unless they already know. They're not just going to do it just as a normal stop. When would the payment happen? They'd, when you they'd land. About, okay, on the cocaine? Well, yes. It would be about, well, marijuana and all was a week or two. The, the cocaine was usually about two weeks. So after I did the uh, the first 300 load, I went back and I said, it'll hold 500. No, no, senor, your good luck is 300. So they'd only put, only put 300 on my, me. And so I was making, it was an eight hour trip in a turboprop aero commander. I was making one and a half million dollars for an eight hour trip. Oh man. And I said, when do you want me to come back? 
we waiting on you, senor. Just any time I wanted to land, there it was. Just, I could have gone every day. But they'd get up about $7 million they owed me, and I'd stop. I ain't going to go no more until you pay me. <laughs> $7 million? Yeah, that's all the credit I'd give them. So, okay, so how many, how many loads would you do in a month? Later on, I did about one a week. So about one a four. week. Uh -huh. So making so about, about six million dollars. Six million dollars a month. Yeah. What are you What are you doing with that money? Piling it up. Where do you put it? I buried it, and <laughs> I bought farms with it, and I bought corn. I like buying rare corns. I bought the the Brasher de Bloom, and uh, right now that thing's over, worth over ten million dollars, about the size of a quarter. Wow. It was made for George Washington by a guy named Brasher. He was, did, he was the architect for Washington, D.C. So those are valuable little coins. That was the best I did. And I, I bought land. I bought. I got into real estate investment. I had 21 oil wells. I bought airplanes and houses and mansions and anything else. But I always had to put them in other people's names. And guess what? That money just doesn't come back to you. You give you give suitcases or suitcases to some good investor, and it's just like it's got wings on it flying away. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw one come back. How much money, if, if you don't mind me asking, at the height of your career, how much money, what were you worth? What was your net worth? Uh, I, I remember $60 million. $60 million, what year? 1982. I wonder what, that's, what the equivalent of $60 million today would be. Probably, I don't know, probably at least two times, double that. So probably a hundred and fifty million, something like that, 200 million, I don't know. Well, I mean, a lot of things triple with this new guy in office, so. <laughs> but, uh, but, but it don't buy anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But, uh, so, but yeah, that would be interesting to know. $60 million. Did, did you trust anybody to manage it? I trusted everybody. You did? That was the mistake, huh? You can't. We, uh, when Mari and I first went out to California, we, we got a job. We, we didn't we still live with my sister for a few months. And so we hey, everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.